Hello and welcome to the making of Playing With Songs, episode number three. I'm playing with songs It won't take long I'm playing with songs Don't you know I'm playing with songs Well, just where did we get to from last week? So in last week's episode, you'll know that I was also spending a lot of time working on these three songs for an audition that was coming up. And I also have been starting this project with a friend of mine to put together this kind of short film and we wanted a song in it. So we wrote a song together and then I recorded it and I wanted to record it, you know, maybe in a way where you could add drums or add piano. Um, but I realised the intro, I'd taken out two beats, so it was mostly in 4-4, and then it dropped out two beats to then go into the intro. And I, I know that there's a feature in Logic Pro where you can change the time signature halfway through, and I've been putting off buying this software for a long, long time, and I know it would be useful, and it's got lots of probably many wondrous things that GarageBand doesn't have. So I finally plumped up the big bucks, £199.99, and, and bought Logic Pro. Ooh, blooming echo. Now, you may also know that I've recently been working in these little 25-minute chunks, these little pomodoros, because you can only really concentrate for so long. They say your mind begins to wander after sort of 10 to 40 minutes, so why not restrict it? So that your mind doesn't wander and you can stay focused and take little breaks, you know, not idly scrolling for the phone, a little break, maybe idly looking out at some lovely countryside and then coming back to your task at hand. So that's what I'm doing, it's been working great and I'm going to keep doing it. In my little breaks I've actually been uh, meditating for about five minutes and yeah, I've really felt wonderful and then I fell off the habit for like a week and surprise, surprise, started feeling a bit rubbish. So I've got back onto it now. So I've mostly been working on these three songs for the audition. And I've used a method that Jim Quick talks about, which is coming up with stories. So you can use this method to have a list of uh, words or a list of anything really random and then link these things together through a story. And so I've been trying to do that for the songs. So well, like the example he gives, which I now need to be able to remember, is like you've got a, a fire hydrant and then it's attached with balloons and the balloons go up into the air and then the balloons are shot down by batteries which come from a barrel and then the barrel has come off a board which pivots off of a diamond um, and then the uh, a knight in shining armour steals the diamond um, but then he's come up against an ox and he can't get past the ox unless he brushes his teeth and then a big neon sign is revealed saying congratulations. So that's a way to remember these ten words which was um, a fire hydrant, balloon, uh, batteries, board, diamond, night, ox, toothpaste, uh, sign. <laughs> There's another word in there somewhere that I've missed. So sorry, Jim Quick, if you end up watching this. Um, there's always one word that I miss in that list of 10. But either way, it is a, quite a good way to remember that list. And I've not really revised that for, for weeks or months. And, and it's all stayed in there apart from one missing word. What could it be? Oh, oh, who knows? So I've been using that and coming up with stories uh, for how to remind me to play the guitar and the vocals. So what kind of stories did I come up with? Well, for one of the songs, I imagined that it was in a big swimming pool uh, and then I was lying on a lilo and then my, my friend was lying on another lilo and we did a high five and then we paddled away and then we shook a banana and an apple. And it might sound a bit crazy, but that helped me remember to get the rhythm spot on and strum with a nice straight strum and remember at the point where we're close together to have my elbow a little bit more tucked in to fret the chords properly and to bring it out in a more flattened position for these uh, these bar chords in the E-shaped bar chords. Um, and that helped a lot. And I sort of went through developing that story more and more to the end of the song. But it kind of got to a point where 
was getting a little bit too far-fetched and a little bit difficult to remember. So I think it's very much a skill like anything else. You need to practice these stories and find out which part of the stories work, which parts don't. And then I started adding in the vocals and I found, you know, to remember to stay singing on the vowels. I then imagined that we weren't just on a lilo, we were on a surfboard and it was a big wave pool. And that allowed me to remember to stay on the waves. And then I imagined the waves are kind of going up and down because a lot of the notes were scooping up and down and that allowed me to stay on the notes on the vowels and move up and down like the original singer does in the track so this worked really well and the other thing we want to get back to doing was working out songs in little chunks and going back to the original songs as much as possible to take in as much information to really get to the heart of the song because the audition this is for is for a tribute it needs to be sound and look exactly like the original singer and guitar player. That is the aim, you see. So I downloaded this app the other day for Mac OS called Capo, and I thought, well, what's that? It's music or something. And it come up to update, so I updated it, and then I found it's actually really useful. You can put a song into it, and it figures out the tempo, and then everything's marked in, the bars are all marked up, and you can just select a section and loop it, speed it up, slow it down, change the pitch and everything, brilliant. And then I started to think, well, when I come to record the video, the tempo is going to be different, isn't it? Because this is an old band from the 60s, and the, the tempo might speed up and slow down, and I've got really used to playing and singing it in how it used to be, and then it's going to be different. So I thought, well, I wonder if I can take this information from this Capo software and put it into some software like GarageBand. But then I thought, well, now I've bought Logic Pro. I wonder if I can put it into Logic Pro. I had a look, and I don't think you can. You can pay for a subscription. Maybe that gives you options to do it. I don't know. But I didn't really want to pay for a pres prescription or a subscription. <laughs> um, so I didn't do that. But I kept researching, thinking, well, how can I get this information, this tempo information and all the bars set just how they are, so I can make a backing track that sounds a lot more like the original song rather than the backing tracks you get online, which are probably better in some ways because they're more in time. I thought, well, can I get one that's actually, you know, like the original song? So I kept looking and digging and eventually found out that yes, yes, you can. You can drag an original recording into Logic Pro and have it on this adaptive tempo mode and then it will just figure out all the durations of the bars and the tempo that it's in. It doesn't always get it perfect, you might have to go in and, and tweak where the downbeats come and things like that. But it does it, I thought, great, okay, right, now what about listening to chunks? Yes, you can listen to chunks and there's lots of ways to do it and it's like, this is brilliant, I didn't know you could do all this. You can have an arrangement track on the top and you can mark in like the chorus and verse, and then you can even grab and drag that arrangement track around, and it'll actually even rearrange the song. So you can literally take in an original song and just rearrange it like within seconds. It's, it's like, wow, this is great. And you can even color the little names of the arrangement tracks at the bottom, at the top, so it's even clearer to see, I mean, all the verses are gonna be red and the choruses are green. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then what about the stories? How can I remember the stories? and not have to keep loading up like old text documents or finding old bits of paper where I wrote down the notes. I thought, well, I wonder if I can keep these, all this information in the project itself. And it turns out, yes, you can, which is great. You can go into project notes and just have a, a big stream of text about it. But I thought, well, really, I just want notes for each chunk. So it's like, can you do that? Yes, you can, <laughs> which is great. You can put in what they call markers that will mark a little duration of the track. On top of these arrangement tracks, you can have lots of different sets of markers. But in those markers, it seems rather than just typing the name of the verse or whatever, you can make another line when you see the notes and add in even more information. So I can put all the information about the stories and the name of that specific trunk and then you've got these options you could just use the markers or you could use the markers and the arrangement track but there's all these options available to you and it's really great because it now means that I can have all the information I need to keep referring back to in the one project and it also meant that I was able to create my own drum track to match the original song in the, its original tempo with its little bits that speed up and slow down and it didn't take too long, it was, yeah, it was pretty cool. So basically you can have your cake and eat it too. You can take an old song from whenever, put it in Logic, recreate you know, at least the drums, 
um, and make them exactly the same as the original song. And then you can be practicing that little chunk, going over the verse, 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 and then just switch the track off and do it without the verse and record it in and be able to check back straight away and know if you've got it right or you've got it wrong or you're getting closer or not. It's just like, wow, this is brilliant. So it gave me a new idea. I was thinking, well, there's this method called the Loki method where you remember a series of things through locations. I thought, well, because I was worried the stories were getting a bit too detailed and is there a way to sort of um, link them together more? And I thought, well, I could use the location method, which my like, route is starts here in my room and goes through the house, out down the road, past different buildings. Um, so that's an option. You could take the story and tie it into that. But I thought, well... We learn everything through association and there's less of an association between this crazy abstract story and these locations. So then it made me think, well, what if I can put the story in these locations? So that's really the next step and the next thing I want to try is taking this crazy story. I was in a swimming pool and throwing bananas back and forth to get the rhythm just right and jetting up into the air and jetting down and moving all around. Um, It was a crazy story, but it really helped improve the technique of guitar playing and singing. Maybe we put this in the location. You know, a swimming pool can move, in my imagination, to the next room and down the road. And that would link it even more and it create even more little points of reference. The other thing I just want to quickly mention that I haven't got in my show notes, I do have show notes, I try to be organised, <laughs> I do try, is that I was having a great difficulty really fretting these chords accurately so that all the notes rang out. And I spent a lot of time faffing around with the setup of the guitar, and I really don't know if it's at a perfect setup, whether I've got the right kind of gauge strings or this, that, and the other, and I'm tweaking and tweaking and watching videos. But one thing I do know is that if I adjust my fretting hand for each chord and the little distances between the fingers and, and just try and get everything just right, it will. It does always come to a point where, okay, this is the perfect way to fret for how this guitar is set up and size of my hands, etc. And that works. But one of the things that made that difficult to keep doing, I realised, was actually looking at what I was doing. I thought, you know, every time I'm looking at it, I'm, it's almost a, another session of processing that my brain goes through to look at it and go whereas if I don't look at it there's a there's less thinking involved so I thought right I get my blindfold out so I got my blindfold out and I practiced a bunch with the blindfold doing the stories and then everything with a blindfold and it did make a huge difference I really didn't think it was doing anything and I left it a few days and kind of sort of gave up with it and then I watched back at the videos I'd made when using these methods and I was like wow This is like a hundred times better than not doing it this way. And it seems like such a silly way to do it, but it is a better way to do it. And also it engages a lot more of the brain because I'm thinking of all these crazy far-fetched stories. I'm having to listen a lot, lot more intently and I'm having to be a lot more observant of how everything feels under under my skin of, of playing the guitar. So I'd recommend that to everyone who plays guitar or plays any instrument. If you can play it blindfolded, do because it really makes a huge difference and really heightens your sense of hearing, I think, and your, and the sense of, of touch. I mean, obviously, you don't get any hearing back, certainly not me. My hearing loss is quite a lot, to be fair, so it doesn't bring any hearing loss back, but it certainly makes you more observant of the hearing and the touch that you already have. Now you might be thinking, well, that's all great, but what on earth does this have to do with playing with songs? How's it going to affect our playing with songs produced shows and our playing with songs acoustic shows? But what difference is it going to make? Well, quite a big difference, actually. When it comes to the playing with songs produced show, which is going to be the show where I take an original song I wrote back in the day on usually acoustic guitar and singing and then figure out, you know, what was there in the song and what can be added to make more from it. I'll be able to do that directly in Logic Pro, which is going to be really cool. I mean, I'm sure lots of other software do the same things. I've just never really used them. I'm sure Ableton and Cubase do all of this amazing stuff as well. I'm not saying this is what you go for. I just, I've got used to using Mac since 2004, and I just, 
I like the way they work, so I just stick with what I know because I like it. But we can take that original song, put it in Logic Pro, right? It can pick up the tempo and probably even the key as well. And then you've straight away got the, the bars marked in the right place, which means I can label up all the chunks straight away and also add in the notes straight away of, of what kind of feel and tone the song has got, where we want it to go. And then it means when we say, right, I want to add a bass line for this chunk, I can add in the notes. So there's a couple of places where I could add the notes. And I can either say there's a marker there and then in those notes is, okay, the bass is going to be like this, the guitar is going to be like that, the vocal is going to be like that. Or you can put notes in for the track, but you can't do tracks chunk by chunk, which would be my ideal, because then you can have a track and then have chunks and say this chunk is like that. So instead it's going to have to be a, a bit different. But you can have as many marker sets as you want. So what you could do is have a marker set for all the bass lines in chunks and then noted down what they are. I mean, considering that we're mostly going to be concentrating on one chunk at a time, one instrument at a time, that might be the best way to do it. But either way, it leaves these options wide open. And had this, had I not discovered this, the alternative would have just been to write it down on pen and paper or write it into a text document and continue to refer back to it. Whereas this takes away that barrier and puts it straight into the project itself which means there's the information, it's in the project, we can just record straight away. And it just brings down another barrier to creativity and to the creative process, which is great, you know. Uh, I just didn't realise you could do things like this, so it's, it's quite exciting. But how does this affect the Playing With Songs acoustic show? Well, how does it? Well, again, we'll be able to interpret the tempo and feel from the original recording, which means we've got more information to work with. But then, as it goes on, we'll have the option then to either practice these little bits in chunk and chunks and keep them acoustic, just with vocals and guitar, or whichever. Um, or we'll also have the option, once we've got to the end of the song, of recording a complete take, but then yet let in logic with its adapt tempo mode, interpret the tempo, and then find out how in time or out of time I played and, and how consistent it was. I think it would make a nice option to then be able to practice the song in chunks, practice the song in total, and then practice the song with nothing. Because with the playing the songs acoustic, I really want to create a song whereby, yeah, it could be played with a full band, but it's more just taking this acoustic song, keeping it acoustic, but just making it sound a little bit more polished, a little bit more refined. And that's what the playing with songs acoustic show is. It's really getting the level of practice up and I think with playing with songs acoustic, there's probably a bit more immediate things that you could translate to your own playing and singing because you could play it, apply it to any song. Whereas you, you get just as much of that kind of stuff in the playing with songs produced, but there's more steps before you get there. So I guess, you know, acoustic songs are a bit, you could say, a bit more raw in a way, aren't they? Because there's less going on. A bit more, can be a bit more personal. So those are really like wonderful benefits that are going to really speed up the production process and even the production process of both playing with songs produced and playing with songs acoustic. <laughs> So what is next? Well, these audition videos, I never really quite finished them as such, but after spending three weeks working at them, I thought, you know, it's about time just to send what I have. So I did, I've sent what I have, and what will be will be. We'll just see, you know, how that pans out. But either way, even if that does pan out brilliantly, that won't be a job that starts until towards the end of the year. So we don't need to worry about that anymore. But I do need to worry about another job that's going to hopefully happen in the summer, depending on visas and this COVID situation. Um, and that means learning about 34 songs. I think I know about eight or nine of them already. Um, but there's less pressure with that because I've got another month and a half or so to learn the songs. And it's not like they need to be 100% perfect. It's not a tribute band as such. It's more a covers band that's covering songs from the same artist, from the same band. So once it's got to a point where I can play it pretty well and sing it pretty well, that's great. It doesn't need to get to a point where I sound exactly like the original singers. So there's a lot less pressure on that. So as that won't take up quite as much as my time, that means we can get back to working on playing with songs, uh, the main show. But it just goes to prove that Although I'd been not working on playing with songs, but I'd been working on other songs, it has just proved that working on any kind of music helps inform and improve uh, 
everything that I'm trying to do, and I'd say probably everything any musician is trying to do. The more you learn, the more you can learn about things, the more informed you are, and the more choices you have at your disposal. So it just goes to prove that you really want to keep learning, especially something related to, to, well, just anything in your life, really. But if you want to get greater enjoyment out of whatever it is you're doing or a greater level of skill, you just can't go wrong by just learning more. That's what I would say. So the next step would be to take what would be Playing With Songs Produced, episode three, and import this original file into Logic Pro, which is then going to make it much easier to label up these chunks and establish the tempos and the feeling groove, and also add tracks and notes about how each chunk will be played, which is brilliant. So I've been working, as I mentioned earlier, in these Pomodoro sections, in these 25-minute chunks, and it's been running, and it's getting close to the end. So this full episode should run at just under 25 minutes, which is great. So you'll get to hear all this in a Pomodoro, which is a nice duration to then have a little break from, and then do whatever you next want to do in your life in that day for another 25 minutes, and, uh, and then have a little break. So there you go. That's a, a nice little gift to you, as I tried to do, and that rhymed. So that's the plan. Take Play My Songs, produced episode three, bring Stay in, and use all of these newfound um, skills and techniques in Logic Pro in order to map out the song and plan out the song as fully as possible. After that, we'll then start recording the chunks. At some point, I'll finish audio mixing and colour grading episodes one and two. One day I will, I promise you. Um, and all of this will be on track for the release of Playing the Songs Produced, episode one, which will come out in the beginning of May. So I've been Rob Langley-Jones, and this was episode three of The Making of Playing With Songs. Until next time, take good care of yourself, and goodbye. <laughs>